Carolina Fishing TV, showing you how to catch more fish. Hi right, there, everybody. Welcome to Carolina Fishing TV. Cap Jack Cronk, Cap Mike Taylor. Good morning. We're going to go out and catch some redfish. We're here up here to Moorhead. We're going to head out and go up to Cape Lookout. Real light south wind. Beautiful. Uh, perfect conditions. And uh, there's been some big schools of reds out around Shark Island. And the Cape Lookout show. That's it. From the point on offshore, about a mile or two. We've been looking at big schools out here off the of Cape Lookout. We've been targeting them up and down the coast all winter long with the shoals extending as far as 10, 15 miles offshore. The shallow stuff, um, that Gulf Stream water wraps around. And, uh, we get a, a warm flow of water in the backside. and usually keeps the water temperature just a little bit warmer. So. so we'll probably experience 49 to 51 degrees today out here from Cape Lookout. Hopefully we get a good bite on, so stay tuned and let's see what happens today. It's just great. Serious. Got them all? Yeah, I got them all. Mike, how many fish from that school do you think? <laughs> I'm not even going to say because nobody would believe me. You wouldn't believe us. You just wouldn't believe us. There's, There's got to be over 5,000 fish in that school. Water temperature up here is sitting on 50, just about, just above 50 degrees. And these fish are still feeding hard up here. Pretty red. You hit a... Uh, well, oh, I'll go to bait. <laughs> we weren't first to paddle tail. We'll see these redfish all winter long. And uh, with those north and northwest winds on those calmer days, we can run the surf. Whether it's the inlets or run these shoals out here off from Cape Lookout. And uh, these big piles of redfish, you know, where they've come out of the backwaters for the winter time. This is just incredible. You're going to see a lot of action today out here. Got him all. Look at that school of fish out there. About 50 yards of nothing but drums. Got one, Jeff? Yeah, I got one on too. Doubled up. That water's about six foot deep. And it looks like we're in the Bahamas here. <laughs> That's crazy, isn't it? <laughs> See that color change of that water right there? That's nothing but fish. Side by side on top of each other here. Cape Lookout Redfish. Pretty enough. He, that hook slipped on him where I pulled the hook and Got him again on the side of the head. I was out here recently with a charter and we picked up some black drum. You know, these two three pounders, there's about a three pounder there. A lot of the fish will, will hang in with those red drum. It's a decent one there. The more boats get here, the more people fishing there he is. We've gone through a good spell of cold weather and that water temperature got real down, you know, down very low on us and uh, they pretty much shut down. And it was hard to get them to bite. Our water temperature's back up to 50 degrees now. Yeah, I was down in off our beaches yesterday and there was I was on a school just like this same size school and uh, we only caught probably four or five there in about an hour uh, it was just so hard to get them to bite but the water temperature was down to about 46 degrees there and you can see the difference like Jeff said it's 50 degree water temperature and even with all this boat pressure here and uh, people being catching them all morning they're still they're biting like crazy here a scent of bait definitely works the best for these reds. But you might have to throw it out there and just let it sit there and not move it. Look at that. Unbelievable. Usually about October, what we call, Mike and I call it, referred to as the mullet blow. We start getting those winds, those northeast winds and stuff, and the mullet start running out the beach. And that triggers a lot of these fish to start heading to the surf. And pretty much from any time in October all the way through again until April, it can be incredible fishing in the surf zone on the shoals up and down the beaches and stuff. Not that you can't catch them in the summertime. We do catch them out there in the summertime, but in the summertime, it's hard to get your boat to the beach. So you're primarily surf fishing them in the summertime. Oh yeah. As we get into late winter, when we get cold years like we've gotten this year, they'll go for long periods of time without eating. Uh, you can come out here and toss whatever you want, live bait, cut bait, artificial bait, and they might shut down on you when the temperatures get cold. So they'll go sometimes for a week or two weeks at a time without eating anything. Warmer water temperature up there, they're a little bit fatter, especially them fish that I caught yesterday on our beach. Yeah. I mean, they were really, you could tell a lot. 
whole lot of parasites. I mean, there'd be 50 to 100 parasites on each fish. Berkeley Gulf eel. Suspended, of course. I think these fish are suspended a little bit. What's that? They're suspended up a little bit here. Yeah. They're not just laying yeah, right on the bottom. They're not sitting around on the bottom. Closed captioning, sponsored by... We're back on Carolina Fishing TV. It ain't nothing in these conditions catch a hundred fish in less than half a day. Nothing at all. Got him on again. Oh, lost him. Yeah, you'll see I some mean, people standing in the surf. There's a ton talking. of them right there. Get one on. Hit that, Jeff? Yeah. He was running hard. I think the whole school took off is what it was, and when they did, he went with them. Because a lot of times in the wintertime, these fish are just a little bit, a little bit lazy on their fight. Oh, he spit the hook right down the boat. That's okay. There's enough of them out here. <laughs> just having fun. If it was a tournament, it'd be a different story. Mike would be chewing me out right now. <laughs> he'd, say, he'd be saying, son, costing me, costing me. I'd be like, son, that was a 27-incher. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Perfect 27 you just lost. And I'd say, Mike, don't worry about it. I'm making up for it right here. <laughs> <laughs> if this was summertime, you wouldn't be able to lock down your drag on these fish like this. <laughs> I mean, they're a good fight right now, even in the wintertime, but in the summertime, he'd be going. He's a little better fish. He's about 25 inches long. He is skinny as can be. And weighing on the shoulder, eating a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. See all them fish on that shoal? Oh yeah. There's a few broken here. off and went on the top of that shoal. Right right He's back off your left again, Mike. Standard tackle. 30 pound test fluorocarbon. Connected with a double uni. And then whatever knot you like to tie there, I tie a uni knot. Shark Island Reds, Cape Lookout. This has been the nicest weekend of the year so far, by far, hasn't it, Jeff? Slick calm. Definitely, definitely. Real light winds. Seems like every place up and down the coast, along every coast of every state, has got their thing, you know? Wintertime, North Carolina, it's hard to beat the redfish along our coast. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. Go on, on. exercise on some fun on the same day. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Ocracoke Inlet, Hatteras Inlet, every one of them, they're catching these reds, they're same scenario. That's it. Out on the shoals, big blood red schools. Nice fish there. Yeah, the colder it seems like it gets, the, the better it's going to get, the more we're going to come out of the backwaters and go to the inlets. You get this wind out the southwest for over three, four, five days at a time, and uh, you'll see small piles break up and go inside. You look at this fish right here, and you can see where he was attacked by a shark or a porpoise or something. He's beat up right here, here, he's hit lost scales here, and all the way down this side. Then you turn him over, that's what looked like a big tooth mark here. Then a big chunk's been taken out right there. They're pretty tough. Pretty. You're definitely going to get snagged with another boat. That's that's not a hit. no problem whatsoever. There's, you know, no reason to get upset about it. You just somebody loosen up your drag, you pull it to the boat, untangle it, and catch another one. Today, real fortunate, it's, it's calm enough out here and safe enough to where you can actually just anchor down on these fish. So you'll see a bunch of boats are actually anchored down fishing them, and these fish might move away from your boat and toward another boat for a minute, and then they'll come back toward your boat if you're in the general area that shoal that those fish are working you'll catch a few for a few minutes and then you just wait right where you're at a few minutes to come right back to you there's a short one there he's missing part of his tail see it something got his tail off a porpoise yep. or something or shark grabbed the back end of him <laughs> we just i was just showing him that other fish he was hit by something the only problem with the fly right here is you definitely have to have a good sinking line to get in that school chop in that school most of the time these fish right here when they start getting a little finicky, a little sensitive, 
because of the cold, a lot of times we do better with that bait right down on the bottom. As a matter of fact, Mike and I quite often will let it hit the bottom, just twitch it and let it sit there, let that fish rummage and pick it up on his own. They're coming to the boat, right here at the boat. We got them about 25 feet off the side of the boat. <laughs> it's incredible. If you've never seen this before, never actually seen it out here, I know on camera it might look okay, but to be on the boat and see this is just an amazing sight. Got him on. Smaller one, I snagged him. And that's gonna happen. He'll fill your line and he'll take off running real fast and just sets that hook on it. But he's fine, there's nothing wrong with him. Got him on. Another nice red. Get on in here, boy. Two of those. About so, three weeks from now, <laughs> we'll be sitting pretty. Okay, I'm running the boat here. <laughs> He's playing right underneath the boat. Check out this one. Looks like a speckled trout. <laughs> We like to do that, you know? We get into a bunch of them, we start joking. A little con competition about who can get the one with the most spots on them. He just hit that one hard. He definitely ate that bait. Yeah, again, like Mike said, that was just barely moving that bait. Twitch, twitch, and let it sit on the bottom and let them pick up on that scent, that scented bait, and come in and eat it. Oh, broke me off. I think I hit the fin of another fish. They've chafed up that leader material right there. It's got little nicks on it. You've hooked up with a fish and your line pulled so tight across the, the whole school of fish and all the other fish, their uh, fins nicking that, that uh, fluorocarbon. Gotta check it every now and then. Got him on. Oh, lost him. This here is just a little mirror. You know, it tastes like a mud minnow or glass minnow. That's a Berkeley Gulp. I think that one's only three inches he's got on there. There's actually some black drum in these schools of reds. There's a few trout too, but you'll catch a few black drum throughout the day. And the black drum's got a real small mouth on them, so sometimes it helps. I mean, the reds will probably still eat it. And uh, if you get a three, four, five pound black drum down, they can fit it in his mouth. First cast with that little uh, three inch gulp minnow. Pretty red. See that? You don't have to have a big bait to catch a big fish. <laughs> There's one of the biggest reds we've had. Solid one over just over 24 inches on a little three inch gulp minnow. That's the black shad. Little eight ounce jig head. And that was on first cast with that bait too. Oh yeah. I got one that's close, bud. He's close. You know who gets the most spots? They win, they get free lunch. Free lunch, right. Now wait a minute, count your spots first. There's five, <laughs> all on the tail. Uh-oh. Oh my lord, I lunch. believe I lost, guys. I think I lost. <laughs> There's four on the tail and two here. You got 11. All right, I gotta come up with 12 then, don't I? A true flats boat, a gentleman tossing a bait caster, and he's out here wearing them out. <laughs> Some pretty weather. You got one eating under the boat. Doubles, doubles. Doubles up. Got one jumping out of the water. Oh, he's going. Oh. North Carolina wintertime redfish has come get you some. <laughs> nice. He no. jumped ship. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, he's hopped on board with one of our preferred guys there, Captain Rick Patterson. Captain Rick Patterson's got his dad on, and they're having a ball out here on these fish, too. And uh, his dad's got one hooked up right now, bringing him in. Pretty fish. I know Rick's arms about wore out too. I know he's released about a hundred so far today. Yeah, he's got a black drum on here, one about a pound and a half, two pounds. And he did eat the bait too, that's good. Some good eating. Good eating fish. That's a red. Is it? Yeah. Oh, oh, come on. Spitter, he spit the hook on you. This spot Rick's sitting on, he's got a shoal that starts in shore right here on the beach and runs straight offshore perpendicular to the sand. And that school of fish is scattered all across the back of it. But not as noticeable as far as, um, you know, big blob of color, dark color out there, but you can see the shoal peppered with it. 
I thought they'd be feeding better here up on top of that shoal. I thought so too, but they're also not as compact, like you mentioned earlier, they're spread out. There you go. Got one there? Yeah. Mike hooked one up right off the stern of the boat, I mean, 20 feet off the back of the boat here. Shaking his head like a trout. Yeah, he is, isn't he? He missed his calling. Yeah. I'd like to see that trout, too. Get them all in there. Oh, yeah. Few mixed out here with them, but most of them out there. You're under me. Well, he hit instantly. Did he? It's funny how that uh, that happens. You'll make ten casts and not get a strike, and then put it out there, it lands just right in front of one's mouth, and he goes to it. <clears throat> There's a nice one about 24 and a half inches. That's where I got my hit, right off the back lip, right there. <laughs> Wait a minute, now he wants to swim to Rick's boat. <laughs> Man, you together. <laughs> yeah, you felt pretty good there. You got a pretty good thump on you. There's a 23 inch right there. <laughs> yeah, I saw that one hit. <laughs> no, <it didn't. laughs> yeah, he did. Mike tapped that rod one time, let it sit. I got one too. Mike tapped that rod and let it sit for one second, and I watched him thumping from here. Rick, those last few I've caught it. I'm, I put tap in it and let it sit on the bottom, not even moving it. When they thump that bait, it is it is on. If you've never handled these redfish, if you haven't done it, you're just starting to fish. Be real careful with them because they've got some sharp gill rakers in them. You see us grabbing this gill plate and putting one finger, index finger, inside of it. It doesn't hurt that fish at all. We're actually not inside the gill rakers. We're just inside the gill plate and outside the gill rakers, so it doesn't do any harm to the fish. I wouldn't do that if it was a real large fish. One of those bull red drum, but nice fish. Stole my bait. I got robbed. And Mike took the last one. <laughs> <laughs> Just like a true friend. I watched that one hit it. It wasn't 20 feet there. That was a good take right there. My bait come out of school about four or five foot, and here he comes. He split right off the school. Come after it. Did you, did you get that minnow in the boat? Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> Look, you can't talk no smack like that until you get one over 11 spots. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Pretty fish right here. Rick's got another one on, breaking on top of the water back there. I'm gonna. I can tell you one thing: these fish are very active for, for you know for February, like we're sitting in now. He ate it that time. Still oh, you got one on. Eel? Yeah, I cut the eel in half. That Berkeley Gulp eel we're using is a little long for out here, but I cut it in half so it was about four inches long and second cast, he hit it. Got he him hit long? it. He hit it first cast, didn't he? First cast. It liked the eel. Look at that fish. Yeah. He, Man, he hit row. Fish rode up here. He Definitely. Broad. Rick, we got one rode up. Look how fat that fish is, Rick. Pretty. I think we got something going here. I don't know, it looks like there's a lot of spots in that one on the starboard side over there, is there? Nice fish, good job. It looks like you got a set of twins there, Rick. Oh, Mike's got one on. Boy, he's thumping. Well, that's the smallest one I've ever seen out here. <laughs> Rick loses that round. <laughs> Now Dion put the camera down and grabbed a rod and at first cast now, first cast, he throws a fish in the boat with 11 spots which will tie the record for the boat for the day. <laughs> Obviously, that line pulls tight. That school of fish. Heads up! <laughs> Bud, how'd you get right like that? I don't know. Wow, it's been another great day. With nearly 100 reds in three hours of fishing, our arms are wore out. Again, this is a winter fishery which begins around November and lasts through March. And please remember to use caution around these shoals. Special thanks goes out to Carolina Fishing TV's preferred guide, Captain Rick Patterson, and especially Dion Lynn for staying on the camera regardless of all the action and his desire to fish. Folks, stay tuned. 
The 2010 season has just begun.